Hey everybody, Zach again at NewTutor.com coming in and making a video for you today. Front page of DrudgeReport.com and it's talking about they are now seizing white owned farms in South Africa and there is chaos. It says that they're uh, the rise of Malema. I guess that's some kind of new leader, um, but it's a mess in South Africa because a lot of people are like, oh, this isn't going to happen. This isn't going to happen. It's just talk. You know, it's the fringe group over there, but no, it's actually really happening now. Um, and the only reason, listen, the only reason, you know, it's just on, not on a lot of people's radar in my country. I mean, a lot, on some people it is, uh, Lauren Southern and some other big YouTube people have really shined a bright light on this in the last few months, uh, and the last year. And so it's gotten some attention, but not a lot. It's not like in the mainstream of news media. Number one, because it's communism, you know, outright. It, this is pure and simple communism. And a lot of the, the media in our country leans left, very far left, communist left, and they don't report on this stuff when so many people, affluent people um, in this country are being, are, get, are, are very much in danger. There are people who are calling for the outright genocide uh, of white people there. And we're, we've seen this in the news in some places. So... Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just a guy who visited there once. I was there for a week, so I don't have a lot of exposure to what's all going on there. But having since been there, I've kind of paid attention to what's going on in the news and didn't really know this was a thing until, you know, I got there and learned about it. So uh, surely some of the people who are there, maybe some of the ministries who are there, because there are a lot of people coming to Torah who live in that country. And so I I'm, guess I'm doing this on the Torah channel because... Um, I went there, you know, for, for my ministry and I got to meet so many people. A lot of ministries are growing there and my heart obviously pours out for those people, but they have a may, they may have a completely different take on this. Uh, so I'm just going by what I know, what I've seen and what I've read. Okay. But right now, now it's on the front page of Drudge Report, you know, until it's on Drudge, I don't believe it. It's on Drudge. Uh, South Africa began seizing white owned farms in the article basically over at express.co.uk, a uh, br- English uh, 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 newspaper is talking about South Africa farm seizure and terrified war- white farmers plot escape as crackdown looms. So this is trying to figure out what they're going to do. You know, how are they going to, how are they going to get out of here, or how how are they going to deal with this? It says a record number of white South African farmers have put their land up for sale amid the ruling party. Among fears that the ruling party is considering confiscating properties bigger than 25,000 acres, at least 25,000 acres at this point. Tensions among the country's white farming community have been rising since the election of Cyril Ramaphosa assumed office earlier this year and committed his African National Congress, ANC, to land expropriation. And the ANC chairman, Gwed Mantashe, sparked panic last week when he said you shouldn't own more than 25,000 acres of land. Therefore, if you own more, it should be taken without compensation. Folks, that, that's how wars get started. I mean, I, it's pure and simple, that is how wars get started, man. And that's just pure and simple communism. People who are privileged never get away. Privilege is a matter of a gift, um, it says. And that, and that is why we say to give you the tools, revisit the Constitution so that you have a legal tool to do it. So he's talking about the people. And so the issue is... Um, yeah, that this line here in the article. So many farms are up for sale. This is talking about one of the guys who is on, you know, who owns land. He's saying so many farms are up for sale, more than we've ever had, but no one is buying. Well, because who's going to buy your farm when chances of it being taken away are pretty good? I mean, you're not buying something that some that you have to. It'd be like throwing your money down the drain. So, what these folks are now faced with is either fight and maybe die or leave it all and just walk away. Now keep in mind, this these are people who have owned these farms sometimes for three centuries or more. I met one of the guys who was there. It's like, yeah, my, my, my family's been here on this land since the 1500s, you know. And, you know, it, it's they, they've been, they have been there, I think, I think it was the 1500s, wasn't it? Something like that. It was, it was crazy long, long, long amounts of time. Um, you know, so maybe it was maybe it was 1600s. I don't know, but it was a lot. You know, centuries they had been there. Some of these farmers have been there for over 300 years, and they are, you know, they're fan- they've been here longer than this than America has been a country. You know, long before any of these other governments were here, they, the Dutch had settled South Africa, um, and so I don't really know. I I, I don't know, I, folks. They did this in in Zimbabwe. In Zimbabwe, which was just north of South Africa, okay, on the African continent, if you look at Zimbabwe, they did this exact same thing a few years ago. And do you know what happened to Zimbabwe? This is what happened to Zimbabwe.
This is the $100 trillion bill in Zimbabwe. The $100 trillion bill. Does that give you a hint about what happened in Zimbabwe? Yeah, inflation. Massive inflation. So much so that they eventually just discarded the, all of the currency and they went to the U.S. dollar. Because they basically took all the land from all the white people, all the people who had been there for centuries, just like this in this case, all the people who had education, all the people who had skills and know-how, they rooted them out of the country thinking, oh, we got this, and their country fell into the toilet. In fact, a couple years ago, I bought a couple of these Zimbabwe dollars, $100 trillion bills. I thought that'd be cool because it was like after they, they went to um, the, the U.S. dollar, these things like flooded the market. And so I've got a few of these uncirculated, pretty cool. And then I was like, yesterday when I was doing some more research for this video that I wanted to do, I looked over and they were selling these things on eBay for like 150 bucks a piece. I was like, I never knew worthless money could be worth so much. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's a silver lining to all this. I mean, I shouldn't joke because it's not, not funny at all. But at the same time, they did the exact same thing to Zimbabwe, and it just ended in utter destruction and chaos there, and their economy fell into the toilet. It's the exact same thing that's going to happen to South Africa because you have all these people who know so much about their land. They're educated. Um, they have skills and you're going to get rid of them and think you're just going to take over your economy, uh, which is, you know, I, I would consider them a first world economy. Um, you know, amazing stores there. I mean, just like you wouldn't know the difference between here in America and some of these stores you, you go into and some of the shopping centers and stuff like that. Um, it's first world, uh, in my opinion. And, you know, you're going to you're going to destroy it. It's going to go down the toilet because you're getting rid of all the brain power. You just, you know, when I first moved on this homestead, I sought out a professional. It was from the USDA, you know, a guy who's been local, who's lived here all his life and who, and now he's employed by the USDA. And what he does is he goes around for free, paid for by your U.S. tax dollars, and he just advises farmers on things they can do to improve their land. And so I had him come out here because I know nothing. I did not know anything about this land. And I wanted, I want this land to be as profitable and as, as as best producing as I can get it, okay? And when you're a cattle farmer or a livestock rancher, things like that, you are you don't grow sheep. You don't grow cows. You grow grass. Think of yourself as not a cow farmer, not a sheep farmer, not a goat farmer. You're a grass farmer because if your grass is good, then your animals will be good. And so this professional came out to my place and he walked me through my property. And he says, this grass right here, this is what you want to grow. This grass right here, this is what you want not to grow. And here's how you do it. Here's the things you put on your land. Um, you know, and obviously I'm more of a natural guy. I wanted to keep it natural. So he, he advised me to lime it, um, do some th other things to prevent some of these things that are going to, you know, uh, not allow my cattle, my, my livestock to grow. Because he knows. You, you know, he's the guy you go to. When you get rid of all these people who have the education of running these farms, of making them produce actual products and you put nincompoops who don't know anything in charge of these farms, <laughs> there goes your economy, pal. I mean, it's, it's just whoop, down, down the toilet. It's not going to, it's not going to work. You know, Zimbabwe tried it. It failed. And South Africa, if you do the same thing, and so, I mean, they're, you can't, because they're outnumbered. Okay. The Dutch who settled there are vastly outnumbered, which by the way, I get all these people, you know, from the black Hebrew Israelites who leave comments on my page and talking about how the Gentiles are all white. I had one guy just leave a comment today. Gentiles are white and the real Hebrews are blacks. And, we're, you know, we're, we're going to put you guys into slavery one day when, when, when we go back to Jerusalem and we control everything. <laughs> guys, oppression is not about skin color, okay? Oppression has always been about who's in power and who's not. Okay, you have the Barbary slave trade, which took millions of white people from Europe into Africa and sold them as slaves. Millions of white people. You have the Irish slave trade that put millions. Uh, it was, I don't say millions. It was like, I think it was 100,000 or whatever it was, um, Irish people that, that were sold into slavery. These were white people. Okay, and now you have another, I mean, there's lots of examples throughout history where this has happened. You know, and now you have another example where they're going to take all these white people's farms and they're just going to take them away. And you can just figure out something else to do, pal. You're done. And we're going to take it all from you. I don't care if your family's owned it for 300 years. It doesn't matter. 
we're taking it away from you. See, oppression is always always about people who are in power. It's about it's it's not a skin issue, it's a class issue. You know, what class are you in? Are you upper class, middle class, lower class? The upper class is always going to take advantage of the lower class. It's the way it's been through all throughout history. And anyone who denies that fact is not a real student of history. You just don't know. So it's not about skin color. You know, this will happen anywhere. You know, you put a, a majority in power, they will eventually, if allowed, to suppress the minority. It's always the case. It has nothing to do with skin color. Um, yeah, so this is what's going on right now. And I think that if if it was, let's just say I'm living in South Africa and my farm's being overrun. Obviously, at this point, I have talked to other farmers. If resistance could be done and done effectively, I mean, it's Africa. You know, you can, you can, there, you know, there's contraband and stuff everywhere. You can get weapons. Um, can you fight? I don't know. If it was up to me, I'd be shipping, you know, cases of AR-15s over to South Africa right now because those farmers are going to need them if they choose to fight. If they, if they choose to fight, chances are their education and skills will take them to across the victory line. But it's going to cost them. I mean, war is never good. Civil wars, empires rise and fall um, all throughout history, and they're always painful. So they have to decide, you know, can they, can they fight? Is there, is there a cohesive, you know, uh, resistance there that, 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 can, that can maintain itself and hold together? If not, run. Get out while the getting's good. You know, if, 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 if it means leaving my farm and, you know, the history and heritage that my ancestors had produced before me, well, that's just the way it's got to be. You know, if I, if, I can't, if I can't put up a good resistance and main, defend what I have, you know, through physical force, then you got to go. You know, my family, I want to I be able to survive with my family and, and, and uh, you know, I'll have to go somewhere else to do that. Hey, look, there's land for sale in Arkansas. <laughs> you know, come on over here. You know, we'll, we'll figure out something. Um, Anyway, uh, this is something that's just a mess over there. I saw that, and like I said, it just it it hurts because I know that um, I know that there are people over there, you know, who are struggling with this. I've been watching the news, you know, the, the Lauren Southern you know, videos, and people are scared. They're really scared, and and with it, with good reason. And it's finally happening. They are taking away, and uh, you know, and 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 not only that, but a lot of the fringe groups over there are. Um, are talking genocide of the white people, kill all the white people. This is not, this is not the vision of Nelson Mandela. This is not what he saw, not what he wanted. And right now he's rolling over in his grave. He knew that you needed that education. You needed those people because they have a heritage there and a skill set that these other folks don't have. And if they get to do what they want to do, Zimbabwe, part two, this is your future. So you, and the last thing I'll leave you with is there are folks in my audience sometimes who think I'm a little crazy when it comes to the preparedness and homesteading stuff. You think this can't happen here? Think again, pal. It can absolutely happen here. And so uh, the, the difference is this society here is way more well armed and we're not a minority. But, you know, look at the, the left leaning way our government has been going up until at least the time of Trump. You think that you know, oppression can't get crazy here. And, you know, you crazy Christians and family types and conservatives, you know, we can't get rid of you. Yeah, they can. It can happen here. So the times we live in. All right, we'll leave it at that. My prayers go out to you guys in South Africa. Um, I'm praying that uh, you'll look for God's will and he will show it to you. We'll leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks.